Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, in this video I am going to talk about the plasma proteins in health and disease. What are proteins? We all know that proteins are molecules made up of amino acids that is what defines a protein. So, how many kinds of amino acids are there in proteins? We have the standard amino acids which are encoded in the genetic code and these are found in all the proteins of the body. Proteins are very complicated molecules structurally. They have four degrees of structural organization, the primary, secondary, tertiary and the quaternary structure. The proteins which have a quaternary structure have at least two or more polypeptide chains. Proteins occur in varied locations. They are found intracellularly, they are found in blood, they are found in synovial fluid, CSF and so on. And they serve a multitude of functions all over the body. Coming to a special group of proteins which are called as the plasma proteins, we need to understand first what is plasma. In the blood, we have a liquid medium called plasma and the formed elements called the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. How to separate plasma from whole blood? When blood is collected into a tube containing an anticoagulant, it may be citrate or it may be oxalate or it may be heparin and then you mix it with the blood gently so that not to hemolyze the RBCs and then you centrifuge the blood, the upper layer separates into a clear liquid which is called as plasma and there is a lower layer of cells which is a packed cells containing RBCs, WBCs and the platelets. Now, what is the plasma protein concentration. It is around 6 to 8 grams per deciliter and clinically it is very important to measure the total protein concentration because it gives us some idea about the disease process that is going on. That is why we should know the total protein concentration in plasma. Now, the plasma proteins are classified into three major fractions, albumin, which is almost 50 percent of the plasma protein 3 and a half to 5 grams per deciliter, the globulins 2 to 3.6 grams per deciliter and fibrinogen which is involved in blood clotting that is from 0.2 to 0.6 grams per deciliter. The albumin globulin ratio is also important, it is around 1.2 to 1 to 2.5 to 1. Uh, the ratio and in certain diseases the albumin globulin ratio turns upside down. The globulins become more than albumin. So, it is also important to know the AG ratio sometimes when you are diagnosing certain conditions. Most of the plasma proteins are synthesized in the liver. Those involved in clotting, the entire albumin, some of the and the, all the proteins that are involved in clotting are all synthesized in the liver. There is one small fraction of the plasma protein which is the globulins, I mean the immunoglobulins particularly, they are synthesized by the plasma cells which are a modified kind of B lymphocytes. Now, one by one we will look at some of the proteins. Albumin is the major protein in human plasma like I mentioned it contributes to about 50 percent of the plasma protein in blood. It has many functions 
it contributes to colloidal osmotic pressure which is the pressure which keeps the liquid in the blood vessels. When colloidal osmotic pressure goes down the fluid part of the blood leaks into the interstitial space and you get a condition called edema. Albumin transport free fatty acids and the fatty acids being hydrophobic they need a protein to which they have to bind otherwise they cannot be transported in the blood. So, albumin takes on the role of transporting fatty acids. It also binds to bilirubin which is a toxic compound formed from the degradation of heme part of hemoglobin and bilirubin if it increases above 20 milligram per deciliter we know that it causes kernicterus causes convulsions in the brain and can cause death. So, albumin takes care of bilirubin it binds to bilirubin and transports it to the liver for detoxification. Albumin also binds to steroid hormones there are number of steroid metabolites in our blood. So, they are also very hydrophobic compounds. So, they need a binding protein and albumin does the work and any medications that we may be taking also binds to albumin. Albumin also transports ions like calcium and we call it the protein bound calcium and the copper and the zinc in blood. Now, hyperalbuminemia is a condition where plasma albumin goes below the normal level. It may be due to different reasons like say for example, reduced synthesis as seen in protein energy malnutrition where there is decreased intake of protein due to unavailability of protein in uh, famine conditions or during war time when people do not get enough food to eat. Malabsorption which affects the intestinal cells and due to this the protein absorption the amino acid absorption will be very low. Liver diseases cause a decreased synthesis of albumin. Abnormal distribution like you see in severe burns where the fluid part of blood is lost, ascites where is there is accumulation of fluid in the between the uh, membranes that is covering the lungs for example and the lungs this is could be one site of ascites. Increased catabolism of albumin can occur during injury, major surgery or trauma, infection and fever. Excessive losses of albumin are seen in condition called nephrotic syndrome which is about the increased permeability of the glomerular membrane to protein. So, albumin is lost along with certain other lower molecular weight proteins during hemorrhage where blood is lost or during acute and chronic inflammation. Alpha 1 antitrypsin what is alpha 1? Alpha 1 refers here to the position of the protein in the electrophoretic separation of proteins which we will be learning little later. Antitrypsin because it acts against trypsin which is a serine protease. So, alpha 1 antitrypsin is a protease inhibitor which migrates in the alpha 1 band during electrophoresis. It is basically a serine protease inhibitor it inhibits enzymes which have a serine active site serine residue contributing to the active site like trypsin elastase and other enzymes. It is synthesized by hepatocytes and macrophages mainly in the lungs and its deficiency causes emphysema. Emphysema is a condition where you see loss of elasticity of the alveoli and there will be breathing problems. Ceruloplasmin is a alpha 2 globulin it migrates in the alpha 2 band in electrophoresis and it binds to copper in blood. It exhibit a ferrooxidase activity and has a role in the transport of iron in plasma. It is synthesized in the liver and when ceruloplasmin levels are low the copper does not bind to it properly. So, it spills over into the soft tissues 
just like what happens in Wilson disease and this even has causes neuropsychiatric symptoms. Haptoglobin is a protein that migrates in the alpha 2 band, it is a alpha 2 globulin found in the electrophoresis pattern and is synthesized in the liver. Its job is to bind to hemoglobin which has leaked out of the red blood cells that is the extra corpuscular hemoglobin and prevents loss of free hemoglobin through the glomerulus. So, whenever there is hemolysis in the occurring within the blood vessels, it is haptoglobin that binds the hemoglobin and takes it to the liver and destroys it. Levels are decreased in plasma of patients with hemolytic anemia. Alpha 2 macroglobulin. This is a proteinase inhibitor. It is actually a pan proteinase inhibitor because it can bind to enzymes which contain all kinds of active sites like serine active site, aspartic active site, metalloproteases and thiol proteases. It binds also to cytokines and growth factors. It increases in nephrotic syndrome. Why does it increase in nephrotic syndrome is because it is as a backup for the loss of alpha 1 antitrypsin in the urine. Transferrin is a beta globulin synthesized in the liver, transports iron in plasma in the ferric state. And then there is a group of gamma globulins which are commonly called as immunoglobulins. These are subdivided into 5 classes IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD and IgE and we are going to learn about them later on. Plasma proteins have also got other functions. They are involved in the maintenance of viscosity of blood, the thickness of the blood. They also maintain the acid base balance because they have charged groups in their amino acid residues which can either accept or give up protons depending on the pH of the blood. When there is acidosis, when the proton concentration has gone up, they can accept the protons and when there is alkalosis, when there is increase in the bicarbonate ions, they can give up the hydrogen ions to buffer the pH of blood. They have a role in defense mechanism by virtue of the immunoglobulins working as protectors of the body. They are circulating in the blood, they are produced by plasma cells which are activated by antigens and they neutralize the antigens that come in their way. Enzyme activity is widespread among many of the proteins. Most of the proteins are all enzymes whether they are found in the blood and whether they are found intercellularly or wherever they are occurring. They are also involved in blood coagulation, the intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway as well as the common pathway of blood coagulation. Many hormones such as insulin, ACTH are proteins. They work on different endocrine organs and finally, they produce end organ responses and they are very powerful molecules. Inflammatory response, they are also involved in uh, times of inflammation like C reactive protein is involved in a inflammatory response. What is electrophoresis and why should we know about electrophoresis? Electrophoresis is a technique for the separation of proteins. It can also be used to separate proteins which occur in the plasma. Protein separation is based on the electrical charges on the protein. Many of the side chains of amino acids like lysine, arginine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid contain charges and these charges can be utilized for the separation of proteins. 
small amount of serum or plasma is applied on a cellulose acetate strip or agarose gel on a glass slide, current is passed across it for a fixed length of time. Separation of the proteins occurs into 5 bands albumins, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta and gamma globulin. So, 5 bands of proteins can be separated by this method and visualization is by staining with an appropriate dye and then you can compare the pattern obtained in the normal plasma with that of the abnormal plasma or serum. Each of the immunoglobulin band is made up of several proteins. It is only that the albumin band is almost entirely albumin whereas, the other bands contain different proteins. Since in plasma itself we have more than 100 proteins occurring. Albumin makes up most of the obvious band that is the first band that is there. We will be seeing the electrophoresis pattern. Alpha 1 globulins mostly consists of alpha 1 antitrypsin which form the alpha 1 band. Alpha 2 globulins mainly alpha 2 macroglobulin and haptoglobin. Beta globulin is the transferrin. Gamma globulins are the immunoglobulins or they form the gamma band and the electrophoresis of plasma if you compare with the electrophoresis of serum there is a difference. In the case of plasma we find an additional band in addition to the 5 bands we find a 6th band which is the fibrinogen band in the beta gamma region. So, plasma proteins how can we use them in the diagnosis of disease? So, electrophoretic analysis of plasma proteins can be done. So, for this the plasma is buffered at a pH of 8.6. At this pH all the proteins in the plasma or the serum they get a negative charge. Thus, plasma proteins migrate to the anode or the positive electrode because all the proteins are charged negatively. So, the negatively charged proteins move towards the positive electrodes and form the different bands based on their charge differences. This can be recognized as definite patterns and give clues to identifying a specific condition. So, let us look at some electrophoresis patterns how they appear. Comparison of serum and plasma first we need to know what is normal so that we should we can compare it with what is abnormal. So, in the case of serum the negatively charged pole has been marked in the slide and the positive pole of the slide has been marked. So, the proteins will be moving from the negative to the positive side. You can see the albumin has migrated the farthest from the negative side followed by alpha 1, alpha 2, beta and gamma. Each one of them represents a band of proteins and the gamma band you can see it is a broad diffuse band it is entirely made up of immunoglobulins. The immunoglobulins migrate the slowest in the electrophoresis and the albumin migrates the fastest. In the plasma if you compare it with the serum you find one more band the fibrinogen band fibrinogen is a protein which is involved in blood clotting. During clotting fibrinogen converts to fibrin and helps in the formation of the fibrin mesh. So, this protein is seen between the beta and the gamma region as an additional band because plasma we have collected by inhibition of clotting. So, earlier we learnt that we have to add an anticoagulant if we want to collect plasma from blood. So, here you can see that there are 6 bands in the case of plasma. 
What about liver cirrhosis? Comparison of the liver cirrhosis pattern with that of normal, we can see two big differences. The first one is the albumin. The albumin in liver cirrhosis is very low. Why is it low? Because the liver is the site of albumin synthesis. So, albumin synthesis is affected in liver cirrhosis. So, the albumin band becomes very thin. Whereas, if you compare the gamma globulin band in the case of normal with that of cirrhosis, you find that there is a bridging of the beta gamma bands. This is because of increased production of immunoglobulins in liver cirrhosis. So, the two bands they fuse into one band. Multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is a type of cancer of the B lymphocytes which are found in the bone marrow. The B lymphocytes transform into plasma cells. The plasma cells produce a kind of immunoglobulin which is called as the monoclonal immunoglobulin and these monoclonal immunoglobulin light chains are found in excess in the blood. And when you do the electrophoresis of a myeloma patient, you find that there is an additional very prominent dark band in the gamma region and these immunoglobulin light chains are even excreted in the urine and they are called as the Benz Jones protein. In the blood, when we detect through electrophoresis, we call it the M band and in the urine when they are excreted, we call them the Benz Jones proteins and they can be detected by heat coagulation test. Nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a condition where in the kidney, the basement membrane of the glomeruli become more permeable to protein. So, because of this, the albumin and certain other low molecular weight proteins are lost in the urine continuously. So, the albumin band becomes very thin as observed on electrophoresis and the alpha 2 band increases because of the increased production of alpha 2 macroglobulin as a backup for the loss of protein which is mainly lost as albumin. So, nephrotic syndrome, there are two differences in the pattern from normal. So, that completes this video on plasma proteins.